Hey there, everybody. Jonathan Levy here with Bitcoin Academy. And today I'm going to be walking you guys through an unboxing and tutorial of the Trezor hardware wallet. Now, as you guys may know, Trezor is our preferred hardware wallet, the one that we all personally use. And I have my very own Trezor right here. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through why we like it and also help you set up your very own test wallet. Now, it's important to note, like I said, my real wallet's right here and is not going to be published online. So don't even bother taking the code words or private key and trying to create this wallet because this is going to be a throwaway wallet. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you get your Trezor is make sure that the seal is still intact. Obviously, somebody could manipulate the firmware on the device, though Trezor does have a tool on their website where you can verify and see if the device has been tampered with. So to go ahead and open it up, it is a little bit tricky to open it up elegantly, but we will give it a go. And we'll go ahead and get rid of all this plastic. And I do want to also give a shout out to Trezor, who was kind enough to furnish us with this device for setting up. You know, we told them, hey, we all at our team use the Trezor wallet, and therefore we all have our own wallets already set up. And so we needed a little bit of uh, help because we didn't want to use our own personal private devices for setting up keys and publishing online what the process looks like. I'm sure you guys can imagine why if you have seen that funny, funny post where a news anchor holds up a private key and whoa, lo and behold, the Bitcoin in it is gone. So like I said, it's a little tricky to do this elegantly, but there you have it. And when you open up, you will be welcomed with a bunch of cool stickers, as you guys can see and you have your recovery seed booklet. We're going to get to that in just a moment and why that is important. So there are your stickers. You have two recovery seeds. You have a nice little dongle thingy that you can use, a very short and cute micro USB cable, and voila, the device itself. Very simple. You'll see it does not turn on unless it is plugged into the computer. But I will go ahead and clean up this mess and I will show you guys a walkthrough of how we're going to set it up. Let's switch over there. So here we are with our Trezor device. And the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to wallet.trezor.io. That is the website of the Trezor wallet, the online wallet. I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a cold storage. But actually what's happening is that the Trezor is going to read your keys off of the device over here and use the online interface to interpret and control. So fear not, your keys are always kept in cold storage. In fact, that is the benefit and really the brilliance of the Trezor device is that the internet has no access to your keys. This cable and this protocol and the special chip in the Trezor device is very simple and it does one thing, which is authorize use through the key, but it will not, under any circumstances, allow you to access the key or even view what the private key is, thus keeping your device in cold storage. As you'll see on the screen, what you need to first go ahead and do is connect. And you will be welcomed with a nice little welcome message. And it will ask you to install firmware. Treasure is shipped without firmware. You can go ahead and download that. It should go very, very quickly. And it will install it right there, as you guys can see. Great. Now you can unplug your device. It will go dark and now you can plug it right back in. Then if we head over to the computer screen, we can put in a name for the Trezor. Why don't we try out Testzor? Sounds good to me. And we can always change that. We'll hit continue. Now this is, as you guys remember, I said that everyone on our team is using a Trezor. This, in my opinion, is one of the coolest features and one of the reasons why we like it so much, besides the fact that the team is so proven. In other devices, you may need a pin, uh, but you 
might not be protected if someone is watching. I mean, we all know that you can expose your pin by doing a pattern on your keyboard. If someone is watching, if someone's controlling your webcam, if someone has a Trojan horse on your computer, they are able to view your screen and your camera and possibly other things. So here's the brilliance of the Trezor device. These numbers and their pattern change every single time. So every time I enter it in on the screen on the computer, it's going to look different. And therefore, anyone watching my screen, either virtually or over my shoulder, will not actually know as long as I hide this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and set a very insecure pin, which will be one, two, three, five. And actually, Trezor will tell you if your pin is too easy to guess. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see everything has rotated around. Now I have to look at the device and determine one, two, three, five. Trezor will accept that as a pin, and we are well on our way to getting our device up and running. Let's go ahead and try out our pin. One, two, three, five. Enter. And one, two, three, five. Great. We are set and ready to go. Now, Trezor gives you really great instructions for this, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how to do it. Typically, what we would do is we would take this very nice little card and we would write out these 24 words right here. I personally don't really want to use this nice card that they've given me. So instead, I'm going to write them out on the side. It is very important, and I think Trezor does a really, really nice job, that you don't take screenshots and you don't type it on your computer. You can see never make a digital copy because all of our computers these days are either synced or compromised or left in our office where other people can get to them. The safest, most secure technology to date is the pen and paper where you can put it in a safe. So do not cut the corner. Make sure that you write down your seed words. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my end here. And you'll see I just have a nice little post-it note that I'm going to use so that I do not have to use up these nice things, these nice cards. Every single time, I'm just going to hit next. Now, you don't have to worry if your handwriting isn't very good because you will know, likely, that all of these words actually are individualized. Uh, and that there are no confusing words such as there, there, and there. But it is important that you get the order of these words correct. So write them out neatly in rows so that you know what the order is going to be of them. And I like to just use the card that they gave, unless it's a throwaway wallet. So I'm going to continue writing down those words. Now, I want to add another note about this, which is these words are extremely, extremely private. And I can't emphasize that enough because a lot of people think, you know, if someone gets your bank password, you'll be fine because you can tell your bank, hey, I got hacked or whatever, and your bank is insured and they will make sure to reverse all the exchange transfer, whatever, whatever is done on your bank account that you don't want done, your bank will reverse there's no one at Bitcoin who's going to reverse. There's no one at Trezor who can reverse. If they could, Bitcoin wouldn't be as great and as secure as it is. So basically, if someone has this password, or really what it's called is the seed, which will generate your private key, they own your wallet. And the blockchain doesn't know to differentiate them between you and a thief. So you need to keep these words extremely safe, extremely private, and extremely secret, which is why, like I said, this is a throwaway wallet that I'm never going to do anything with. And even if you guys donate Bitcoin, I probably won't get it because I'm going to get rid of this as soon as we're done recording. So let me just wrap up writing these 24 words out. And we will be good to go. I hope you guys are, in the meantime, thinking of a very safe place to store your key. Now you'll notice that I've been doing this only on the device because it never ever will show my 24 words 
on the screen. That would eliminate the purpose because as I said, my computer may not be secure. My internet may not be secure. Someone may be watching over my screen. So you might wanna do this with cupping your hand over the screen so that only you can see this. If you're in a public place with cameras, I know it sounds ridiculous, but crazier things have happened. Personally, I set mine up when I was all alone. I recommend you do the same. So now Trezor, because these words are so private and secure, is gonna have me confirm that I wrote them down correctly. And I'm just gonna check off screen with my little post-it note and make sure that I've got everything exactly in order. Seems like I did a good job talking and writing. Great. Great. Excellent. And battle. Great. We're in good shape. Now you'll see that it's going to prompt me again for my pin, which again has changed in shape. Beautiful. Good to go. And here we go. I have my very first account, account number one. You might know that Trezor will actually allow you not only to have additional accounts, for example, you can have different accounts all saved under that seed. You can have, in addition to Bitcoin, you can have Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic all in one place. Really, really great. And basically it functions like any wallet that you might have used before. You also have, if you've set it up before, legacy accounts. All of these accounts now are SegWit compatible addresses and you can if you add a new address you will see that they are or add a new account it is a new account and each one of those accounts is an hd hierarchical deterministic wallet which will have an unlimited number of addresses you guys can if you want to see the basics you can export your xpubs which can give you a really great way to view a read-only wallet if you want to see this on your iphone that is personally something that i have done is I have exported my XPubs from my Bitcoin wallet on Trezor and I have gone ahead and I'll show you guys exactly how that works. I've gone ahead and I've imported those XPubs into BitPay. So you'll see here, this is uh, one wallet and you can see in the bottom left corner that it is a Trezor wallet and you can see the balance and this will actually watch and see whenever I get wallet wallet payments into any of my addresses that are controlled by the Trezor. But because it's not a hot wallet, I cannot transact with those. I can receive, but I cannot send. Coming back to the Trezor wallet screen, you'll see you have a home screen that you can change, which is pretty cool. Personally, I really, really like to use the custom Bitcoin Academy one which you guys are welcome to use as well. And you can just set that as a home screen. You have to confirm on the device as with sending any other transaction. And then you have some other kind of advanced features that I don't really recommend you play around with. Getting back to the basics, if you guys want to receive and send, it's exactly as you would anticipate. You have a receive address. You can copy and paste this and send it to people if you want. Uh, you can add more addresses, very easy. And if you want to send, you just have to copy paste an address in there. There is no smartphone app for the Trezor for iPhone. I believe they have one for Android. Uh, and it's very, very easy to use, guys. It, one thing worth noting is that when you do want to send a transaction, you will actually have to confirm it on the device using this key, which is Trezor's way of not transmitting the key, but rather letting the key do its authorization right here on device when paired with the official Trezor app. So that's pretty much how Trezor works. Once you start getting some transactions in there, you will see them loading in here. You will start to see all kinds of analytics and you'll start to see all kinds of different graphs that will show you what you have in there. You can also lock the device and you can forget the device if you don't want your computer to remember your pin. You don't want anything left on your cache or in your browser or anything like that. So really, really great device. We strongly recommend this device. And if you want to pick one up, please do use our link, which is jle.vi slash trezor dash wallet to pick up your very own Trezor. 
Like I said, we can't recommend them highly enough. And we really want to thank them for sending out this promotional unit so that we could give you guys this in-depth tutorial and walkthrough of how to use the device. Remember guys, if you don't own the keys, you don't own the coins. And if you don't keep the keys in a secure place, well, you might as well not have them at all. So be safe, invest in a hardware wallet, take the time to back up the keys, the private seed to the keys, put it somewhere safe where no one will think to look and no one will happen upon it. And you will not be another sad sob story on Reddit of someone losing millions of dollars of Bitcoin. Take care, guys, and enjoy your trezors. Thank you.